Gordon, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for asking me. Now listen, I'm, I'm going to ask you the big question first. Is this the beginning of the end of the Communist Party in China? I mean, I, I'm asking you to speculate, but, it, but you did write the book, The Coming Collapse of China. And I did say that it would take a decade, and that was 2001. So yeah, I'm a little bit out of time, but this looks pretty bad. Yeah. We really don't know. Um, last month, Premier Wen Jiabao said that China could slip into another cultural revolution. Um, and there's a lot of signs that we have that, that could actually occur. For instance, we had Bo Xilai, you mentioned. He invaded another province with hundreds of armed security troops, and he surrounded the U.S. consulate in Chongqing to prevent one of his former lieutenants from defecting to the United States. Then we end up with this dead body in a Chongqing right. room. As British citizen, British who apparently citizen. had connections to Bao Xilai's wife. Right. I assume there were business connections, and he kind of was, well, he was, he was found sure. uh, dead. And then he was cremated before a full autopsy was done, I believe. Correct? After conflicting um, explanations of how he died. And, and then, of course, Bao Xilai was stripped or suspended of his party post. And, and you that's gotta, a big deal. That's, that's a big deal in China to give people, I mean, that is, he got his power and his authority from his role in the Chinese Communist Party, correct? Right. So, in effect, being stripped of your post is like being, you know, purged, in right. effect. And, and his wife is now under investigation for murder. So this could get really ugly because Bao Xilai really has been pushed to the wall. He has no incentive to go gracefully into retirement. He has a corpse in his closet, but he knows that the other leaders have skeletons in theirs, and he's probably willing to out them right now because he has nothing to lose. Right. Now, um, the other uh, members, uh, senior members of the Communist Party, they're all aware of this, though, right? And yet they decided to purge him from the party. Why do you think they made that calculation? I think that they really wanted to get rid of him, and they figured if they were going to go halfway, they might as well go, might as well go all the way. Uh, and that, of course, carries big risks, because it means then that Bo's friends, and there are a lot of them, the leftist elements of the military. Right. He's still very popular in his region, which he ruled. Um, I don't know, for many years, I right. believe. So he's still popular. And just to put it into perspective, um, Chan, Chan Ching, whose name I cannot pronounce just quite right, is a, is a large urban area, about 30, 30 million people or so. 30, so. 32 million. It's the size of Belgium. It's like a country, for yeah, God's right, sake. Right. Um, and, and there were thousands of people who were in the streets uh, just a few hours ago, either for or against Bao Xilai. So this is breaking out into the streets. And that's really important because this could just sort of mushroom out of control. Now, now, is this really just a matter of what we'd call inner party turmoil, meaning uh, jockeying amongst the elites in the Chinese uh, government, or are there underlying conditions, economic and social conditions in the country that would somehow could foment, say, the rise of somebody to actually oppose the existing rulers in China? All of the above. Right. Um, you know, you got a China which in reality is only growing in low single digits. Communist Party is splintering. Authority of the central government is eroding. The military is breaking free of central control. And we got people in the streets, to, you know, in protest. So you have the elements there, which is not to say that it's going to be this time. Right. But nonetheless, when you check the boxes of what you need for revolution, discontinuous political change, right. they're all there right now. And yet, I take what you said as, as, as GDP growth has been overstated. That's what, that, that's Enormously. Your that's your assertion. I mean, there are a, a number of uh, market observers out there who look at the Chinese banks, for example, Chinese real estate development, say they have all the signs of speculative bubbles. And yet, over the last decade or so, the Chinese uh, economy and standard of living in the country has risen very, very dramatically. And China has sure. increased its power quite dramatically. Uh, of course. And now they've reached about the limits of what they can do within their existing political system. You know, 10 years, it's time for a downturn. You look at the numbers for the January, February period, which are aggregated to eliminate the distortion for Lunar New Year. And they look like low single digits. You got March, some pretty bad indications. And also, there's some sort of of evidence that the central government is fibbing on its headline numbers. This is not a good story right. for China. Let's, let's turn towards, uh, say, our American viewers. 
they, they look at this and go, is this just an internal dispute amongst Chinese leaders? What impact does this have on me? Now, of course, you know, right. I think even the average uh, viewer, sure. if, if China blew up and had some great economic difficulties or turmoil, uh, people would when? understand when that people would understand that that yeah. would impact them. But until that does happen, if this thing remains, say, let's call it a political dispute within China, does it have any impact on on the average viewer's life out there? Um, for the most part, no, but it could get out of control. And the reason it could really impact the United States is that when you have these feuding civilian leaders, the military is actually becoming much more influential. These rumors of coups are an indication that the Chinese people understand that the flag officers, the generals and admirals, might be the final arbiter of this dispute. And that means the Chinese military is starting to exercise it and implement its own policies. We have this dispute at this very moment in, in the right off the shores of the Philippines. Philippines with these ships in close proximity to the, each other, um, this could really get out of control. And this is an example of what happens when you have a military. And service. we have to also put it into the, the context of we're at a, a relatively sensitive time. There's a political transition underway amongst the right. senior leadership within China. It's taking that's taking place as well. Final question, Gordon. Looking forward, what would what should say people like me in the U.S., what should we be looking for in China to see signs that things are either, you know, um, going to be fine or that there will be greater upheaval going forward? Leading indicator is money coming out of China. In the fourth quarter of last year, about $100 billion of hot money. That followed about the third quarter, $34 billion of outbound hot money. That's really, I think, the most important leading indicator. Gordon Chang, an expert on China and North Korea as well. Check out his book. You have a book out on North